Ford has just signed a massive deal with Nebraska Lithium. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in, for supporting the channel. The whole point of this channel is to get more people away from fossil fuels to electric, clean, renewable energy and EVs. That's what Ford's trying to do as well. Even though Ford did just say they plan on making more money from internal combustion engine vehicles in 2025 than they do today. Significantly more they claim they'll make. Let's see how that plays out. What are your thoughts on that? Let me know in the comments. I'm not convinced. Ford Motor Company said yesterday that it signed a long-term deal with Namaska Lithium for the supply of lithium, including lithium hydroxide, as the automaker ramps up electric vehicle production to 2 million units every year, by 2026. Considering Ford only sells around 4 million cars per year, that would mean that more than 50% of Ford's production in 2026 would be fully electric, which would be a great result. The announcement comes as the automaker holds an investor day meeting, and this deal with the Canadian lithium company comes as North American automakers race to secure supplies of battery materials to boost EV output amid surging demand for EVs and for you know, taking advantage of this new movement and not being disrupted by Tesla. Basically, they're probably sick of losing sales to Tesla in the United States anyway. I mean, we've seen the numbers. They're drastically, people are moving away, of course, stopping. You know, a lot of buyers are saying, well, we don't want to buy internal combustion engine vehicles anymore. If you don't have a good one, if you don't have a compelling one, we'll just go elsewhere. And, you know, Ford wants to get in on this car bonanza. You don't want to be disrupted. If you're selling an analog camera and digital ones come along, you want to start selling digital ones as soon as you possibly can. Now, that's the whole point here of Ford ramping up and producing so many EVs in these new EV factories that they're building right now. Earlier this year, Ford joined PT Vale Indonesia and China's Zhejiang Hayu Cobalts as their new partner in a 4.5 billion nickel processing plant in Indonesia. The deal announced on Monday for lithium in Canada will strengthen Ford's sourcing to produce 2 million EVs by the end of 2026 and beyond, at a time when doubts linger on Wall Street about the automaker's ability to hit that target. Now, Ford is saying part of the reason they can hit that target is because they're going to be producing a massive number of lithium iron phosphate batteries in the United States, licensing CATL Chinese company CATL, the biggest battery maker in the world, licensing their technology. And it makes sense because those are the cheapest batteries you can, that are currently commercially available. You're looking at about 85 US dollars per kilowatt hour, which is incredible considering the price of batteries was about $500 per kilowatt hour only 10 years ago. However, the question is, whilst Ford have plenty of lithium now, nickel, do they have iron and phosphate? Well, phosphate is a challenge. I'll have a video coming soon about the challenges in the phosphate market. It's worth mentioning that Ford also disclosed a five-year agreement with Albemarle Corporation to supply more than 100,000 metric tons of battery-grade lithium hydroxide for about 3 million future Ford EV batteries. Now, that's actually an Australian company, an Australian mining company, who are doing some pretty impressive things. The lithium hydroxide produced by Namaska should help qualify Ford vehicles for consumer tax benefits under the US Inflation Reduction Act sent forward. So this is part of the reason they're buying lithium from a Canadian company, because if you do that, then your EVs will qualify for the incentives. If the minerals you produce are not from North America, then within about a year or two, you'll no longer qualify. We're talking billions of dollars. The lithium hydroxide produced by Namaska should help Ford qualify. And so that makes sense that they've made this strategic decision. I think it's a good one. Ford reaffirmed its full year guidance of 9 billion to 11 billion of adjusted earnings before interest and taxes and about 6 billion in adjusted free cash flow. The automaker continues to expect its EV business to lose 3 billion this year. Now, considering they lost over a billion in the first quarter, I think it's more likely they'll lose 4 billion because they're saying they're going to ramp up production. They lose $20,000 right now per car sold. If they ramp production up, are they going to lose less money because they're selling more cars? I'd say probably not. They haven't really hit that mass market effect yet, where you start to lose less money because of simply economics of making more cars. So I think Ford will more than likely lose around $4 billion this year from their EV division. But within the space of a few years, and once they've ramped up their own lithium iron phosphate battery production, 
I can see Ford making some good profits, but it's going to take them a few years and it's going to take them quite a few challenges to get there. Namaska Lithium is owned by Inventestment Quebec, the economic development agency of the Quebec government and Livent. So basically Ford now has partnered with the Quebec government for lithium production. This, in my opinion, is a good decision. So is Ford's decision to build its own lithium ion phosphate batteries in North America. But it is controversial. Politicians are not happy that they'll be licensing CATL's technology. I don't believe they have any choice. I think it's Ford's only real path to making a profit, to profitability from electric cars. General Motors, on the other hand, while they're not sold on lithium ion phosphate batteries, they don't plan on making them or using them. And I think that's a big mistake. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And thank you for watching.